And welcome to Overnight America. Wow, big blues win. Feels pretty good for that. Man, we could be talking playoffs here tomorrow. Could clinch a spot. How about that? Very exciting news. Yesterday, of course, we talked about the Mueller report. We're going to get to that next hour. We have a very special guest this hour. I'm excited to bring you. In 2015, he released a series of YouTube videos titled Flat Earth Clues. I've talked about the documentary that you can find on Netflix called Behind the Curve. His YouTube channel has over 16 million views. Joining us now live is Mark Sargent. Thank you so much for coming on, Mark. Hey, thanks very much for having me. I'm so happy that you're going to come on live. You're over on the West Coast, so it's not as late. Like in the East Coast, it's past midnight. If last I checked, you're over on the West Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only about 9 o'clock here. It's not so bad. Oh, perfect. Well, I watched the documentary on Netflix, and you're kind of the centerpiece of this documentary. So I looked you up online. I'm Mm -hmm. sure a lot of other people have been looking up online, too. And I was curious. I thought, oh, it'd be kind of fun if we can have Mark on the show. I emailed you. You emailed me back. It was no problem. So you're very, very much open to talk about Flat Earth and your beliefs of it. And I've looked at a couple of your YouTube videos. You do questions and answers. Mm -hmm. So you're very big into starting that dialogue and trying to talk to people about it. So thank you for coming on here to KMOX. Uh, It it is my pleasure. So thank you. Of course, I I come at it in a way that I am not someone that believes the Earth is flat. But I love to talk to other people and what their beliefs are. You're someone that is very good at defending your points of view, which is also good for conversation. Hmm. I wanted to get your thoughts on the documentary that's out. When you first saw it, what are some of your general impressions of Behind the Curve? Sure. I first saw it up in Toronto at a film festival uh, last year. uh, Because in something like this, it goes through the film festival process. If you don't have a buyer right away, they just Mm -hmm. shop it around to, to different film festivals and hope that you get a buyer during that. And so when I was up there in Toronto with Patricia Steer, uh, we watched it first in a hotel room with the director and the uh, one of the producers and the editor. And we I had mixed feelings because, yeah, it's exciting to, to you know, I, I didn't even realize I was going to be, be the protagonist for this film. But at the same time, I, I went back and told uh, the community, I said, look, if you're into Flat Earth, you're probably going to hate it. Because, you know, there's a lot of dissenting voices. They talk to an astronaut and a psychologist and a couple scientists. But if you're not, if you're a globalist, if you're like you or probably most of your listeners, Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have a lot of questions. And that's what happened. Every film festival that I went to, uh, hands went up. And when we had time to do Q&A. The, the questions never stopped, which is, how does this work and what, what, how do you account for this? And it mm-hmm. just never, ever ended. So it was, it was a lot of fun. So, I mean, honestly, for us, the, the short version, it's going to be our greatest Trojan horse recruiting tool to date. <laughs> well, I, I was hoping that's the way you would see it because yeah. there is a, a silver lining, I guess, if you don't like the content of the documentary. At least it's directing people towards you. Oh, yeah. And I, and I, I don't know if this is a fair statement. I thought, and of course, you, I think you called me a globalist. That's the first time I've heard that before, yeah. uh, the, the term. So I, I think you're much more likely to convince other people as opposed to other people convincing you would that be a fair statement oh yeah yeah it happens all the time yeah. I mean, people that get into flat earth don't get into it because they like it everybody hates flat earth just to start off mm-hmm. and me included uh it took me nine months to come around the average person now because there's so much content online it takes about two weeks so yeah we 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 create way more recruits we in fact we, we've got a 99 percent retention rate Mm-hmm. You know, which means if you're if you're into it, if you actually get on the flatter side, you're never, ever going back to the globe, which is oh. weird. It's a weird thing to say, but it's true. So you have no defectors once they come. No, up. no defectors. I mean, there was like <laughs> there was one guy in England who tried to defect. He was the only guy I ever knew of a hardcore guy. And he disappeared. We don't we don't know his channel's still up there, but we haven't heard from him. Mm. So, you yeah. know, I, I had a couple impressions about the documentary itself. I was trying to watch it objectively and then try to take a couple of mental notes while watching it. Sure. I thought it did a pretty good job of portraying the humanity side of it all. I mean, everyone there seemed very friendly, yeah. very personable, you're able to to talk to. And I, I did see one thing that I wanted to point out that I, I was very curious if you noticed the same thing too. Hmm. Every time they talked about your point of view, they played this like cartoony music under your voice, but they didn't do that for the scientists. Right. And I thought that's just one of the ways they try to manipulate people. Yeah. I, for one, when I watch a documentary, I want to try 
my best to try to keep it fair and not try to use those little manipulation things. Right. But other than that, I thought it turned out pretty well. Yeah, I mean, it was supposed to be a human interest piece. Uh, that's what it initially started out at is, and then only later, because we were trying to figure out why they were why the director, who was trying to be as objective as he could, we spent seven months with this guy. Uh -huh. uh, he took shots at Jared and Globusters and me, and and he took these 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 stinging shots towards the end. Yeah. And only in the director's commentary on iTunes, we figure out why when he slipped, he slipped and he goes, yeah, everything was going great until we got to the conference in Raleigh and that 12 year old kid walked up to the microphone and started mm -hmm. asking me questions. And that's when all of them, they all agreed. It's like, no, no, we've got to, we have a responsibility to take a stance for the children. Yeah. It's like, whoa, 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 because we, we're targeting children? Come on, what are you, what are you doing here? It's like, there, cause there's got to be a minimum age to get into uh -huh. and look at Flat Earth. And I was really surprised by that. Yeah, so. and I wanted to ask you some questions about your beliefs. I want people to kind of get an opportunity as well to ask you questions, if sure. that's all right. Sure. So let me give the phone number. It's 314-436-7900 or 800-925-1120. And that first number, the 314-436-7900, people can text that line as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I started watching some of your videos, and you do a lot of questions and answers. Yeah. What, what are some of the most common questions people give you before I give you some of my questions? Or maybe you can give me what you think is the number one question people ask you in your response. The number one question, wow, I don't know if there is a number one question. Top five. Uh, top okay. five questions would be, how does the sun work? How does the moon work? What are the stars? Uh, how thick is the earth? And of course, one of my favorites, but it le comes in at least one out of every 10 is why? Yeah. Why, why keep it a secret? Okay, well, let's start with that one. Why keep it a secret? It's too big not to. Uh, it, mm -hmm. It's one of those things. It's not It's not like any other conspiracy you've ever heard of. It's so big that there is a chance that civilization itself might be disrupted. And by oh. that, I mean uh, academically, economically, and, and spiritually. Academically, all your physical sciences would have to be retold from the ground up. Astrophysics and astronomy would have to, wouldn't even open their doors the next yeah. day. Uh, economically, I mean, come on. If Donald Trump got pneumonia tomorrow, the world markets would respond. And that's oh, yeah. just one guy. Uh, if this ha I mean, you'd have to close world markets or suspend trading for several months just to figure out what the heck was going on. And then religiously, I mean, you've got five major religious houses in this world and you're giving them all leverage against science, which they have not had in the last five centuries. To combine those three things. Yeah, that's, that's a really short Illuminati meeting at that yeah. point. Well, well, how did um, the first person discover this and how did they come about deciding to keep it a secret? Uh, okay, so the old guard, you know, Flat Earth was, was a thing a long time ago. That, I mean, every, just about every culture believed in Flat Earth mm -hmm. up, up until a point. And then what, what I was trying to tell people is like, look, even our best and brightest, our best scientists didn't figure it out until about 1960. And that, the only reason they found, figured it out was because we, our airplane technology got better, good enough that you could actually fly high enough and far enough. And so what happened was the United States and the Soviet Union figured it out in Antarctica, otherwise known as the beginning of the edge of the world, around 1960, and that's when they decided to keep it a secret. And it was, you know, all right, let's seal off the upper edge and the outer edge, and it's just time and money. Let's see how long we can hold on to this thing. Mm, interesting. You know, I think that, in general, people are curious about how this dome works. Right. So, so how do you, so kind of explain what that is and how it works. You are living, you are not, okay, the, the short version for everybody out there who's probably just staring at their, at their radio right now going, what is happening? Uh, okay, you do not live on a little tiny rock with water draped on the outside of it, spinning through space at five different directions. You are living in a stationary building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And everything you see in the sky, everything you see in the sky is some form of projection. The, the stars and the planets are just pretty little lights. And then the sun is just like a big incandescent light bulb and the moon is a LED bulb, which okay. generates a, a cold light. So there you go. How, how do they have the technology to make it so that light bulb never goes out? <sighs> Come on, man. You're, you're, you're talking about, I mean, we didn't even, look Look how far we've come just in the last 50 years. We didn't have HD yeah. televisions 20 years ago. Sure. How, are, how old's your cell phone? Not that old. Yeah. So what could, right. we, what could we do in 50 years? What could we do in 100 years? Uh, we could do a lot. We can, we can so make this... skylights right now. You can put it in a basement that can simulate a sun and a clear blue sky that can fool anybody. Just yeah. so you know. Well, well, I, I know that here in St. Louis, the arch has a light on top, so planes know where it's at because it's 630 feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. And they have to change that every year just to be safe. So, I mean, how can we go hundreds of years without the light going out, you know, or, or something like that? 
Oh, oh, you mean just like just just in general, uh, just the light. And, a... Well, I mean LED technology, the the stuff that we've had, you know, which is a low impact laser, more or less. I mean, those things supposedly can run almost forever. I don't necessarily believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, remember that even the 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 incandescent light bulbs that we had were impossible. Yeah. What the long version of those were impossible even 40 years ago. So, mm -hmm. and remember, what, what I'm saying here is we did not build this place. Right. We, you know, we had nothing to do with this. There's an advanced technology at work, an old technology, someone that was here long before us and was way more powerful than us. And also, I'm also saying that uh, if we were in this building, we're not the first people to rent this apartment. Not hmm. by a, a long stretch, meaning uh, there were other versions of civilization. Our civilization only goes back unbroken about 5,000 years. And how many other cultures are there? You know, the sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities off of India, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids. Take a look at those and tell me they're only 10,000 years old. Uh, Bimini Road and so on and so on. Uh, I think that every civilization has their time here. And mm -hmm. then after that, you know, we have to move on and let the new freshman class come in. Okay. Uh, Mark Sargent joins us here on KMOX. He's the, I call the centerpiece behind the documentary, Behind the Curve, which you can check out on Netflix. If you have any questions for him, if you have that thing you always wondered about this, you can call in 314-436-7900 or 800-925-1120. How about we take some calls after the break? Does that work for you, Mark? Sure. Great. Let's do it okay. on Overnight America KMOX. KMOX, keeping you up to date with frequent weather updates 24 hours a day on News Radio 1120 KMOX. Don't forget to tune in to the Sheen Bain Minute during the 8 a.m. hour. Dr. Sheen of the Sheen Bain Institute will be your guide to healthier legs. For more information, please go to the SheenBainInstitute.com. Let the Sheen Bain Institute help change your life. Hey, boss, I've been working hard on the new marketing campaign for our jewelry store. We're going to crush Diamonds Direct with this. Look, our customers are tweeting like crazy. Fantastic. Show me. Here's one guy saying how he bought his wife's anniversary gift here. Yeah, w uh, what's that other part? Oh, um, hashtag I should have gone to Diamonds Direct. What, what, what's a hashtag? Oh, wait, look at this one. This guy says his fiance loved the engagement ring she got here. See? Oh, good. Uh, wait a minute. Another hash brown. Hashtag, sir. Hashtag, right. Could have gotten her a bigger diamond than Diamonds Direct. Hashtag overpaid. This is crazy. This tweet thing is going to kill us. Don't take chances. If you want a ring she'll post all over social media, go to Diamonds Direct. Bigger, better quality diamonds for less. And all the designer rings on every woman's wish list. Over 4,000 <laughs> to choose from, each with a free lifetime warranty. Diamonds Direct. Your love, our passion. Oh, here's one. He says our store was the best. Hashtag until I found Diamonds Direct. Ugh, you twit. What do you mean tweet? No, twit. Store hours and directions at DiamondsDirect.com. The time to start planning to secure your family's financial future and protect your assets is now. Dana McKittrick's experienced estate planning and tax lawyers work with you on customized solutions to meet your estate, transition, and successor planning needs. Look to the lawyers at Dana McKittrick for guidance to secure your family's financial future. Call 314-726-1000 or visit dmfirm.com. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. The countdown is on to the deadline for annual IRA contributions. Jefferson Bank and Trust wants you to get the most out of your IRA investments. That's why we're here to remind you to make your annual contributions no later than April 15th. Don't have an IRA? Stop by one of our branches to open yours today. Jefferson Bank and Trust, we're with you. Online at jbt-stl.com. Member FDIC. St. Louis, Mike Schilt here for the Napleton Automotive Group. Buying a new car from one of the Napleton dealerships is a home run. Family owned since 1931. They pride themselves on Hall of Fame customer service and sales with six locations in St. Louis, St. Charles, and Hazelwood. Experience that winning treatment yourself. Visit any of their six locations or napletonstl.com. Napleton, second to none since 1931. At Stiefel, we believe investment advice is about more than helping you manage your wealth. Our investment advice is about you. It's about providing your kids with opportunities for a head start in life, feeling secure in your retirement, and realizing your dreams just may become a reality because you have a plan. We believe in you. Your path to investment advice starts with your Stiefel Financial Advisor. Find your new Stiefel Financial Advisor at Stiefel.com. That's S-T-I-F-E-L. Stiefel Nicholas & Company Incorporated, member SIPC and NYSE. 
When news breaks out, KMOX breaks in. St. Louis's news, traffic, and weather. Depend on it. And welcome back to Overnight America. Our guest this hour, you may have seen him as part of the documentary, Behind the Curve. It's on Netflix now. A lot of people online talking about it. It is popular series on YouTube, Flat Earth Clues, which was introduced in 2015. Now over 16 million views on YouTube in general. Mark Sargent, thank you so much for holding on and staying here on uh, KMOX. Oh, no, no. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. You like a good conspiracy, don't you? Oh, yeah. I've got an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. All right, so here's the conspiracy. We had the St. Louis Blues tonight play, and they won. And we had our post game go till 11 o'clock. News was fine. As soon as we started our conversation, we had issues at the transmitter site. Is that, and is that a yeah, so the, the I don't know. Maybe someone's trying to keep. Oh us no, no, it wouldn't surprise me. Look, I mean, uh, I believe there's conspiracies in just about every level of our civilization, including sports. Come on, yeah. It, you you pick any sport, I will rattle off conspiracies. <laughs> to, to, well, it, to like... It's just weird. It's As soon as we started and went on the air, that's when the problem started. Now, our engineers were frantically trying to get us back on, which we are. So the first part of our conversation right. was choppy. We had listeners messaging us, so they missed the start of it. But I just want to keep the conversation going. But I wanted to let you know that, of course, when we talk about something like this, it starts getting choppy. Of course. Of course. No, no. We actually, wouldn't. it would not surprise me. Uh, when I had a, one of my first guests, one of my first subject matter, matter experts who was a uh, Navy missile instructor for 10 mm. years. He actually trained people on the Sparrow missile system. Uh, the guy that was running, uh, that was helping produce in the background, he said the Department of Defense was pinging us pretty much nonstop during that hmm. entire show. And why not? I mean, you've got a Sparrow missile system guy. You don't want him to like have a few drinks and start talking about how you can disable the system with a pack, of, you know, a chewing gum wrapper and a paperclip and a nine volt battery, something like that. So. And so just for the people that missed it, our stream was still working. So if anyone was listening online, that was fine. It was just the over the air that was having the issues. Hmm. So you, you've done the series, you do questions and answers and people write all kinds of different questions to you about your beliefs on the earth being flat and yeah. you answer them and you'll do these hour long YouTube videos. You must get a lot of questions. And one of the things you mentioned in one of your videos that I wanted to ask you about when it comes to flat earth, you said you believe after this documentary, it's just a matter of time before the media pounces on you. Yeah. As in, they're all going to get on you more than they are right now. Right. And that's going to be the turning point for people to learn about Flat Earth. Can you explain that? Yeah, eventually you're going to have to make Flat Earth the villain. Uh, and that is, you know, we can dance around it. In fact, when we did the documentary, uh, we could the, the people that made it, you could tell, the people that were in science, they, they, they're, they're, they're quite cordial. You know, they, they say everything with a smile. And the, the only way they could create a, a villain in the documentary was use one of our own guys. Mm -hmm. uh, people like to attack villains, and that is eventually has to happen in the flat Earth community. I mean, of course, flat Earth is a topic that is hated by a lot of people, but you've got to personify it. And so, yeah, I'll put myself out there. If National Geographic and the documentary, other podcasts are saying that, oh, you know, you shouldn't talk about flat Earth because it could affect the children in our future, it's like, okay, if that's your hot button, great. That's exactly what I'm going to go after. I will, mm. I will I will volunteer to be the villain. I mean, I don't have to be the, the, the super nice guy who doesn't get the girl. You know, I can be the villain as well. And uh, I'm actually quite good <laughs> at it. You, do you want to be the villain? Are you looking forward no, to that? No, well, time? yeah. I mean, it, if it helps the cause, then yes. I, I would love to step forward. I, look, it's it's a role to play like anything else. And mm -hmm. if, if again, if science wants to, to if that's what they want to do, if that makes them feel better to, to vilify Flat Earth, then they're going to need a person to be the villain. Yeah, happy to do it. So how do you look at this? Because you can also look at this at as a way there's some biblical justification sure. for your beliefs. Can you explain that? Oh, yeah. Uh, at least half of the Flat Earth community, at least in the United States, are very strong Christians. And mm -hmm. most of that comes from chapter and verse. I, not, not to you over cliche the quote, uh, the, the, flat, the Bible is a flat earth book. But there's only one verse in the entire Bible that even hints that it might be a globe, and that's Isaiah 40, 22. He who sits upon the circle of the earth. Well, in the ancient Hebrew, circle is not globe, it's not sphere, it's not ball, it's circle, like a dinner plate, you know, or a hubcap, or whatever you want to call it. Everything else, including Genesis, uh, is, is talks about a flat, enclosed, stationary world. Even goes in, when I was doing my clues, uh, the, my, one of my favorite stories is the Tower of Babel. 
Tower of Babel, you know, a big building, big bridge to heaven. Well, how is that happening if the ball, if we're on a ball that's spinning around and going around the sun? That, that tower is not going anywhere. But if you're in a stationary object, that tower is going straight to the ceiling. And mm -hmm. we see those stories time and time again. So, yeah, the, the Christian faith really latched on to it. If they were 90% 90, 90 sure in their faith, they're now 97% sure. Mm. Yeah. What about um, the messages that you get? Because we, we talked about this before, and I don't know if everyone heard it because of some of the transmitter issues, mm. but you, you do get a lot of messages. How many emails do you get in a day from people <sighs> asking you questions? I don't know, to be honest. Uh, Is it a lot? It's a lot. In fact, it was a, it was a lot before the documentary, and I had severely underestimated the, the Netflix market share. Because mm. when it came out on Netflix, we were already already on iTunes and YouTube and Amazon, and we were, we we've been on there for two months since November. And then mm. when Netflix came out, because it was inclusive, you know, with Netflix, it, you know, it's all you get everything free. Yeah, uh, my email load doubled all, almost within a week, and wow. uh, yeah, so I mean, but believe it or not, not that many people. I mean, I I get a, quite a few phone calls and quite a few texts, even though I, I don't send texts back. Um, but where I get it most, of course, is the comments in the YouTube section. I get oh, I get so many thousands and thousands and thousands of, of comments in the YouTube uh, sections that I can't even begin. I can't even begin to read them or even gloss over them. There's just there's just too many. Plus, I've got I think at this point like fifteen hundred videos on my channel, so yeah. I, I can't keep uh, well, up. Yeah, well, I was looking all together. Your channel had yeah over sixteen million views total. It was yeah. almost like sixteen point two million somewhere up there. And that's a lot of, that's not where all, of most of the hits even came from, which is ironic. Uh, most of the hits didn't even come from my channel. It was people that took because I made my stuff Creative Commons license. I didn't even monetize mm -hmm. it. I said, hey, if anyone can take it and run with it. And there were channels that were making my clues in, and named them other things, not not in a malicious way, and putting on their channels. And they were getting millions and millions and millions of hits. And I didn't even know what they were because Flat Earth weren't, it wasn't in the title. And then people were saying, hey, I enjoyed your movie. And I go, what movie are you talking about? You know, because the documentary wasn't even close to being done. And they would point me to these links and I'd find all these channels that were mirroring my things. So, yeah, I've got at least double that in just people that mirror my, my content, which is great yeah. and flattering. Yeah, I've seen a couple of other things where you mention photos from NASA. Anything in space have been doctored or false. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to get your perspective on that. Do you believe they're false because it's impossible to take pictures from space? Or is it false because you, you have proof or you've been able to analyze the photos and you believe they're doctored? Uh, both. Uh, it really depends what you're looking at. Like all the Apollo photos, and I'm sorry for, look, I, uh, look I'm, I was born and raised in America. Hey, go team, wave the flag. You know, we're the greatest, of course. But, you know, everybody knows that we, we tend to take things too far. Yeah. All the Apollo photos have aged horribly, really, really badly. The movies have aged horribly since the 60s. And everything they've been releasing uh, since from the 80s to the space station and on up, uh, is really, really bad production value. It's not just that we have to, we, we, we don't even have to open up Photoshop half the time because it's just the, the, in fact, the interior shots of the ISS are horrible. Look up things like ISS hairspray, look up ISS CGI, look up ISS harness. I mean, it's, it's like you've got a B, a, like really bad B movie directors that are, that are creating this stuff. And I don't know if they're doing it on the cheap, if they've got production value, you know, issues, they've got budget, budgetary concerns, but it's all horrible. What are you going to do next to prove your point? Because in the documentary, there showed some different experiments mm. you guys were trying out. Is there anything that you're going to be doing to, to, to take the next step when it comes to proof of a flat earth? Well, what I'd love to, of course, we're doing, you know, the laser experiments to try to do curvature, you know, tests and long distance photography, which they omitted from the documentary entirely. And all the subject matter experts from the military that I've talked to and the engineers and the pilots. Those were really great. Um, the, but a lot of people uh, say, hey, isn't there anything on the ground you can do to prove this? And I said, well, here's one thing. And I was willing to put myself on top of being the villain. I was willing to actually put myself as like, look, tell me how a space, an astronaut suit fights the, the vacuum of space. Tell me how that works, because it would violate the law of ther thermodynamics. And so I said, put, get me in any sort of astronaut suit. I don't care how, from what era it is, as long as it's functional and self-contained, not tethered. Throw me in a vacuum chamber, hopefully with a scientist who will put on an identical suit, pull the switch and tell me how we survive in a vacuum because it can't. And you're saying, okay, what's your point? Does that prove a flat earth? No, but that proves that anything that ever showed an astronaut in a space suit is false. And mm -hmm. if that's false, and then every space program that's ever been shown with people is false. And then the whole thing starts to crumble from there. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I have more questions and I feel like I didn't get to ask them that's all. That's okay. Can I? Can I ask for you to stick around for one more segment? Sure. 
Okay, sure. let me let me do that. And because we had some issues at the start, I want to make sure people know they can call in and talk to you. We did have a lot of phone calls call in, but we couldn't tell which ones were trying to tell us we're having technical issues or not. Oh, okay. Uh, th so the number is 314-436-7900, or if you're listening somewhere else outside the St. Louis region, the number 800-925-1120. You can talk to the centerpiece behind the documentary, which you may have seen, Behind the Curve. It's on Netflix. Flat Earth Clues, one of the introductory videos you put on YouTube back in 2015. Mark Sargent will continue with him next on KMOX. Don't forget to tune in to the Sheen Bain Minute during the 8 a.m. hour. Dr. Sheen and the Sheen Bain Institute will be your guide to healthier legs. For more information, please go to theSheenBainInstitute.com. Let the Sheen Bain Institute help change your life. Hey, boss, I've been working hard on the new marketing campaign for our jewelry store. We're going to crush Diamonds Direct with this. Look, our customers are tweeting like crazy. Fantastic. Show me. Here's one guy saying how he bought his wife's anniversary gift here. Yeah, w uh, what's that other part? Oh, um, hashtag I should have gone to Diamonds Direct. What, what, what's a hashtag? Oh, wait, look at this one. This guy says his fiance loved the engagement ring she got here. See? Oh, good. Uh, wait a minute. Another hash brown. Hashtag, sir. Hashtag, right. Could have gotten her a bigger diamond than Diamonds Direct. Hashtag overpaid. This is crazy. This tweet thing is going to kill us. Don't take chances. If you want a ring she'll post all over social media, go to Diamonds Direct. Bigger, better quality diamonds for less. And all the designer rings on every woman's wish list. Over 4,000 <laughs> to choose from, each with a free lifetime warranty. Diamonds Direct. Your love, our passion. Oh, here's one. He says our store was the best. Hashtag until I found Diamonds Direct. Ugh, you twit. What do you mean tweet? No, twit. Store hours and directions at DiamondsDirect.com. Chilly overnight low at 31. It stays above 50 on your Tuesday. A nice afternoon, sunny 54. Then, okay, you don't believe me, 64, 67, 66. So right around the mid... To upper 60s for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Next chance of a storm coming through is on Thursday, but otherwise it looks pretty good. In St. Charles, it's 47. Edwardsville, 43. And downtown at the Arch, 46 degrees. Never paint again. This is Darren, owner of Rhino Shield. Want to eliminate painting your home, business, or church? Call the experts at Rhino Shield. Rhino Shield is a revolutionary ceramic wall coating to regular paint and vinyl. Perfect for aluminum steel, unpainted brick, block, stucco, ephus, drive it, cement board, and wood sidings. Rhino Shield eliminates wasting time and money painting year after year. Our ceramic coating deflects 90% of the sun's UV rays and 100% of the moisture. Our clients want affordable protection with the elimination of maintenance. Rhino Shield protects your biggest investment while maintaining your architectural <laughs> features and gives you the curb appeal you deserve. Make your home great again by working with the Rhino Shield experts. A plus rated with the BBB. Call 877-25-RHINO. 877-25-RHINO. Or 877-25-RHINO.com. See what we did there? Genius. Tell them, ladies. Go Rhino Shield. Never paint your house again. Rhino Shield. At Mini of St. Louis, we live to drive. We're passionate about the ride and the journey that comes with it. Our adventures are big and our car is Mini. During the Born to Drive sales event, come experience how exhilarating a new Mini is to drive. Visit miniofstlouis.com. Driven by the Bomberito Automotive Group, the voice of St. Louis, KMOX. This week, C-Speak, the language of executives, welcomes Todd Schnook. CEO of Schnooks Markets. It's a rare look behind the cash register at a company that touches many in the region every single day. C-Speak, the language of executives, airs weekdays just before the 7 a.m. news. With more online at KMOX.com, this knowledge share campaign offers the C-suite and business owners information to keep their companies cutting edge and competitive. C-Speak, the language of executives, brought to you by PNC Bank. Ever wonder why Europeans seem to speak so many languages? Maybe it's because they use Babbel, the number one selling language learning app in Europe. Babbel's award-winning technology gets you speaking right away, whether you're learning Spanish, French, or German. And best of all, you'll remember what you've learned. I always thought I was bad at languages, but after using Babbel, I can tell you I was just taught the wrong way. Using Babbel's 10 to 15 minute lessons, you can be speaking confidently in your new language within weeks. I was amazed that I could start having real life conversations right away. It was so fast. Now I'm speaking Spanish. Woohoo! <laughs> No wonder Babbel is the number one selling language learning app in Europe. Try it for yourself and see why Babbel is the quick way to get conversational in a new language, like Spanish, French, or more. You can try Babbel for free. Go to Babbel.com or download the app and try it for free. 
That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Or download the app to try it for free. That's Babbel dot com. Making the darkness of night a little brighter. It's Ryan Recker and Overnight America on KMOX. All right, this is your last chance. If you've ever wanted to ask someone who believes the earth is flat a question, anything, this is your opportunity to talk to Mark Sargent, 314-436-7900 or 800-925-1120. Hey, thank you for sticking around for another segment, Mark. Oh, yeah, yeah. Happy to do it. You know, my producer, Mike, had a question. He wanted to know if you have a poster of Kyrie Irving hanging up somewhere. Uh, actually, I bought several of his shirts that uh, <laughs> when when he was still with the Cavaliers. And, uh, oh, yeah. crap, who is his teammate who's now doing sports casting? Uh, 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 I, what, can't remember his, I can't remember I can't remember his name. You're not talking about Shaq? No, 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 no. No, although Shaq, Shaq hold, held tough for about 10 days, and then his sponsors got to him, and there was nothing, what, nothing we could do to help him. Yeah. I, who are the most high-profile people who believe the Earth is flat? Uh, probably Kyrie has got to be the, the most high high-profile guy right now. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. some wrestlers and some other football players and some other basketball players and and guys that are retired, of course. Uh, and, but there's but what I love is there's celebrities out there that I've spoken with who will not come out of the closet until there's oh. until there's more people on the dance floor. They won't do it. Uh. They just said, "Nah, we saw what happened to Kyrie. We're we're not gonna we're not gonna go down that road yet." I don't blame uh, him. I don't know. I don't know what the point of believing in something if you're not going to tell people you believe in it. I don't know. Look, think about when Kyrie did it, right? I mean, he already had his, he just had his ring. He was going to the All Star game. LeBron's his best friend. Every, he's got, he's 25. He had nothing to lose, right? He thinks there's nothing to lose. And then he says this during a podcast just before Media Day. What'd you th- what did you think was going to happen? Now, every freaking journalist that goes into that locker room from now until the day he retires is going to have that in their back pocket. They, you know, in case they get bored, it's like, oh, I don't want to hear about offense and defense and three point shots anymore. Uh, I want to hear about I want to hear about flat Earth, and so yeah. yeah. Anyway, you know, I have um, I had an idea of a way you could prove the Earth is flat, mm-hmm. and I'll run it by you and see if anyone's because I've seen some videos where people say that when there is a launch down in Cape Canaveral and you see the rocket go and then it eventually arches up and outwards yeah. and you say see you can actually see how it's arching away and down it's not actually going up into space I've, I've seen some people mention oh yeah the time like, all the time lapse footage sure yeah so what if you were to have a lot of just you have a large society of spotters that just go into the general direction and they literally spot to see where the thing is going to land oh uh, it's a nice idea but there's the oceans are just too big uh your, yeah. your better bet would t- be to take a 4k camera you know because you can get 4k cameras with a box of cereal nowadays and put it on the top of some sort of capsule and launch it put it on some sort of launch that's going all out out of the uh, out of the earth's orbit and t- have it without any edits and any cuts that's yeah. never happened in the history of space travel it's never in fact there's never even been i don't care what russia today says uh an astronaut that has taken a camera a live working camera and done a 360 with it on any mm. on any surface i don't care if it's the uh the the iss or the moon you would have thought it would have happened on the moon you know even they only had 10 frames per second but no it's never ever happened because you so can't. with this, uh, uh, so here's another question with the the dome question. Yeah. So just in general, I notice that anytime you have any sort of glass with water, there's condensation, and it kind of like you know you, you see these different effects when there's a large body of water in, in an enclosed area. How right. come we don't see those effects on the top of the dome? Because it's too big. Uh, it's yeah. too big, and you're talking about a, a system that has its own air conditioning towards the top. So like first off, that's an interesting question you bring up because a lot of people have asked me recently. Uh, what my feelings are on like climate change. Uh, I go, well, absolutely works, works better in a building because then we're talking to, you know, when you hear the term greenhouse gases, we're literally mm-hmm. talking about a greenhouse if it's enclosed. Uh, as far as, you know, how the air is distributed up there, I mean, between the jet stream system, which is up above, and then whatever's above that, now you can clear it out pretty easily. But I think human beings do have an effect on this system more than they would have the, if it was a globe. Mm-hmm. So what? Uh, let me ask you the two about something I saw in one of your videos because you do these montages of different photos and sure. things. And one said the moon didn't start glowing until 1977. Can you explain <laughs> that one? Yeah, yeah, interesting. That well, I, I didn't, I didn't say, I didn't quote that, but it's a good quote, which is, mm-hmm. you know, the moon. When we look at it, when you look up in the sky at a full moon, it's bright. It's extremely bright. It's a bright, bright white light. 
uh, to where you can't even use night vision on it. I've tried it many, many times, and you'll, you'll break your night vision goggles eventually. So why is it if the moon is really, really bright, when we look up there in the sky, when we saw all the Apollo missions, which was ran from 1969 all the way to 1972, they were on this dull, gray, matte finish. It was this very, very low, subdued tones, and it looked like volcanic ash was everywhere, and it didn't reflect anything. So it, it, it was kind of a running joke. It, they, I don't think they meant 1977. They probably meant something earlier. Mm -hmm. but, but that's what it was. It was like, okay, why does the moon glow for us? And yet, why do the Apollo missions, there's no glowing at all? How is that possible? And that's because for production techniques, they just couldn't do it. They, okay. they couldn't figure it out. So let's say there's a stalemate going on with people that believe the earth is flat and people that don't believe the earth is flat. What would it take for each side to convince the other side? So what what would you think would be the one thing that would get everyone to believe the earth is flat? And what's the thing that if someone were to present it to you and you could not deny it, it would convince you the earth is not flat? Okay, we'll do the uh, for, first question first, I guess, which is how would... How would you convince someone else? If you, what, Somebody else. What would okay. you think you would have to so present to them so they would never be able to deny Unfortunately, it? The, most of the people on the street only believe, I, I hate to say this, you know, especially on a radio show, they only believe what the media tells them. And so mm -hmm. unless somebody officially in the media, I'm not saying there has to be a, a White House press conference, but it's got to come from a mainstream media source. I mean, my okay. sister, for God, God help her, you know, it's got to come from God's lips to Fox News before she believes it. If it is not on Fox <laughs> News, it didn't happen. It's literally, I mean, it's like MSNBC could be preaching it all day long. She's like, nope, Fox News is not there. I, I don't believe it. So, yeah, it has, it's for, mo for a lot of people, it's got to come from a mainstream source. We can show them, although we've been gaining amazing traction with just the sheer amount of content and, uh, and experiments we've been doing, which is kind of fun. On the flip mm -hmm. side, to convince me, here's a perfect yeah. example, because I'd love to quit Flat Earth. I would love to. I've been begging people to get me to... to... Oh, I don't believe No, that. no, it's true. It's, it really is okay. true. Everybody starts in Flat Earth hating it, and including me. Which is, look, I'd love to go back to my, my normal life. I, I, was, I was fairly comfortable and, and happy, you know, in, in my, my bliss. Uh, but something could convince me, well, the first thing would be uh, you wouldn't have to put me in space. I mean, if somebody wants to put me in space, great, fantastic. What I said <laughs> earlier, put a 4K camera on a rocket, fire it off. Do not hit the pause button in any way, shape, or form. Do not edit any of the footage. Give us the raw footage. Let us go through it. And uh, if our best guys and I trust them think that it's absolutely legit, it's like, all right, fine, I'll, I'll quit Flat Earth. Yeah. Well, the Elon Musk did that live stream. Oh, no, don't the you here. even. Don't no, you even. What's wrong with that? That was 4K. Oh, the, uh, okay, first off, it wasn't unedited. It, he never, it never went from the Earth, Cape, Cape Canaveral or wherever it was down in Florida, all the yeah. way up to, to space. There were tons of edits along the way. But the impossible car, okay, let me rattle off 30 seconds real fast. Okay, yes. Of all the things. Uh, the windows, the, the hot and cold temperature variances, we all know if you pour boiling water on a, on a cold windshield, what happens to it? Those side windows would have spider webbed in two seconds. The front windshield would have cracked in a million different ways. Uh, every, th every piece of plastic would have buckled. The vacuum of space would have burst every si pressurized system in there from the battery fluid to the window washer fluid to the brake fluid. It all would have just, it would have been a, a glorious mess. Not to mention, we're talking two big companies here, Tesla and SpaceX, and there mm -hmm. was not a single logo anywhere on that vehicle. Not one. That thing should have looked like NASCAR. On top of that, why were you using the Roadster in the first place? Why weren't you using your flagship model, the S-Series, the four-door Sinan, and then just charged people? I don't know. Disney could have paid for it themselves. You put Boba Fett in one seat, Iron Man, Groot, <laughs> and a Stormtrooper. The thing would have paid for itself. They did mm -hmm. none of that because they were scared to death. It was like, okay, we're going to fake space in the cheap and see if anyone buys it. And they put it up there, yeah. and there were lots of people who didn't buy it, who weren't even flat earthers. That that mm -hmm. image was sent to me, and I go, oh, who did this? Jaren? Did Jaren from Jarenism do this? And the, and somebody wrote back, no, man, that's a live feed. I'm going, what? A live feed? And it's like we were watching it in utter horror. Because it was I, so bad, but the general, but most of the general public did not buy it. The social media uh, okay. just annihilated it. Sorry. I mean, it looked pretty convincing to me. Oh, come on. Just because it was a clear footage. photo? Come on. Oh, I thought it looked very convincing. In fact, I think it looked great. That might be oh, one of the best videos we have it, heading up there. It's pretty. I'll give you that. Yeah. But from a physics standpoint, no. There's no way that car would have done what it, what it would have done. Uh, and, oh, I, you know what? We don't even have time for me to break it down anymore. <laughs> than I already have. So what do you hope happens next for you? If, with this documentary and everyone's watching it now that it's been mass 
massively thrown out there right. by Netflix, and people are talking about it on social media, right. and you're getting a lot more people interested in emailing you. What do you hope happens to you next? Uh, well, this year is mostly just b more public awareness, uh, a ton more interviews. Than, and of course, it's the year of the conferences. We've got conferences that are happening. I just did one in LA, and we've got one in New Zealand at the end of uh, April, Calgary, UK, Mount Shasta, Amsterdam, and Dallas. That's going to be this year. And then, I mean, yeah, that's that's what we're initially hoping for. That combined with more experiments, we just keep pushing, you know, pushing the wheel forward. And hopefully we get some break in the action. I'm hoping that somebody, because I love all my subject matter experts so far, but I'd love somebody from the aerospace industry. I really, really, really would. I'm not, I, I almost guarantee I'm not going to get an astronaut, mm -hmm. but I'd love somebody from the aerospace industry to finally crack. And so did did you feel for a moment there you had Logan Paul as your next big guy? <laughs> oh, Logan Paul. Uh, you know what? I, I, I don't I don't mind saying this. He someone should have smothered him with a pillowcase when he was like ten years old after his <laughs> after his first prank. He was just he is no an awful he is an awful human being, and so is his brother. And by the way, just just on a side note, I was the only one. The second I, because I do research in a lot of social media anyway. When he mm -hmm. showed up, when I was confirmed that he showed up at the Denver conference, I left immediately. I didn't even blink. It's like, get me on a shuttle. I am out of here. And I went to the airport because I knew what he was up to. It's like, look, all mm -hmm. this kid does is troll people for a living. That's all yeah. he does. And uh, nobody was listening to me. Nobody knew who he was. I'm going, he's a troll. He's awful. And he did. He finally released that video and it was worse than anyone could have ever imagined. But I was, yeah. I was vindicated. So I was happy. I skipped through it a little just to see oh. what the gag was going to be. You know, he did those little looks into the camera like he was, yeah. you know, on the office or whatever. Like he thought he was really smug. Yeah. No adult likes that guy, so no. I don't. I, you can't really take you, anything you know, that seriously. I'll, I'll but, give credit. I don't like people to pull pranks anyway, but I'll give this guy credit, which not him. And that is Johnny Knoxville and the Jackass team. They did it better. They did it with more class, and they did it on themselves most of the time. They, huh. you know, they had a crew. It's like, okay, we're gonna pull pranks on each other and hurt each other on a regular basis. That that worked. What Logan does does not. Okay. Well, um, you know, if people want to check out anything you're doing, if they want to go check out a video or a website, where can they go? Uh, easiest way is just Google Flat Earth Clues. That, that's that's okay. where you start. Uh, you will find most of my stuff from there. Uh, behind the curve will you know the documentary I encourage you to see it it's everywhere now and I don't make a dime off of it so hey are great. you gonna make a counter documentary the what are you gonna make a counter video we or a documentary? probably won't I well th I shouldn't say that there are people in the community that are working on it and there's different people overseas I know there's a guy in England that wants to do their version of it and another one in Australia we'll see I mean some are gonna be kinder than others ABC News was nice to us National Geographic hates us and it goes back and <laughs> forth so either way we'll work through it you know, I'm surprised Tucker Carlson hasn't given you a call. He seems like the type of personality on Fox that would give you an opportunity. You know, I did the Australian Today show this morning. And oh, really? Yeah, and I'm going to do the Australian 60 Minutes, I think, and shortly after that. So wow. I'm, 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 there are certain shows I'm dreading and talking. Tucker Carlson, I'm not looking forward to it. But then again, I survived Piers Morgan. When uh, <laughs> I didn't know you did Piers Morgan. Yeah, I did Piers. Oh. I did Piers Morgan on uh, Good Morning Britain, and I was that was probably the only uh, interview where I was n genuinely nervous because I because Piers, it's Piers Morgan. It's like, oh God, what's he gonna say? Is he gonna just pull something <laughs> out of his ass and just insult me? Uh, How dare you? Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, you. as an American, yeah. but since he was in his home turf, it wasn't that bad. And he had Terry Verts, one of our astronauts, sitting right next to him. When mm -hmm. he did it, and he was covering for him the entire time, and he wouldn't let me, uh, Terry wouldn't talk to me directly. He well, kept talking to Pierce. I, you didn't convince me, but you know, I, I do like talking, and I do like hearing what other people believe, and I'm so glad that you at least are open about what you believe and willing to have a conversation about yeah. it. Yeah, sure. By the way, don't, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Ask questions. Yeah. That's why I ask of anybody. So Mark Sargent, you can look him up on YouTube. Well, yeah, I mean, you're very active in posting uh, videos and commentaries on there. The documentary that everyone's been talking about on Netflix called Behind the Curve is still out there. Mark Sargent, thank you so much for coming on to KMOX. Thanks very much. Wow, that was awesome. Good old Mark Sargent. <laughs> cool. So definitely uh, check out the documentary and, you know, do yourself a favor. Go to YouTube, look him up, and maybe you can check out some of his videos too. It's Overnight America, KMOX.